I think it should. Good morning. Nine o'clock Alabama time. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> October 4th. <clears throat> In the 60s here this morning, uh, <clears throat> it was kind of cool. Beautiful days here. Got a little warm the other day. <clears throat> Got close to 90. Um, <clears throat> but they, uh, they tell me that uh, the fishing should be getting pretty good. <clears throat> here in November. Anyway, we shall see. Uh, there we go. Summer coming on there. <clears throat> like I said, the Wi-Fi here is uh, definitely suspect. <laughs> <clears throat> so I hope this is working. Um, Good morning, Susan and Joyce. Glad you guys are on here. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I hear it's supposed to be pretty cool out your guys' direction, too. Oh, Dennis and Deanna are in Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah, you guys are out here on the east side of the country, huh? All right. <clears throat> Adam, I see you're on here. Um, pray for you and uh, just thankful for God's promises of eternity and uh, eternal life and thankful for your dad who had a wonderful testimony and, uh, you know, he, he lived his life in a way that God was honored and, and uh, thankful for that. <clears throat> we will definitely continue to pray for you. Uh, Pray for Wayne Sherman as he continues to heal um, from the liver transplant. <clears throat> I know you would appreciate that. And continue to pray for uh, little James and Kareth and Matt. <clears throat> would appreciate that. They uh, took the feeding tube out of his mouth um, and then ran it down through his nose. So he still has a feeding tube, but that way he can start nursing um, <clears throat> so pray that works today, that, uh, he will, uh, figure that out quickly. Uh, another, obviously another step, uh, <clears throat> that <clears throat> will help him to get home soon. So <clears throat> such a little guy, he, uh, is so tiny and, uh, just uh, continue to pray for him and uh, pray that he will start gaining the weight and his little uh, tummy will work right and and that um, <clears throat> he will do better. They did turn the heat off on his beds where he's regulating his own temperature good. Uh, so <clears throat> I think he still has the IV in, but maybe they'll be able to get that out here quickly soon anyway. So... Just pray for them and uh, that they will be able to uh, get home. We are, our intentions right now, um, we would really like to stay until the kids get uh, little James home. <clears throat> and uh, that's what we're hoping we'll be able to do. So <clears throat> those who might be wondering, that is what we're trying to do, trying to hold out until... We see them uh, get him home, so we would appreciate your prayers on that, too. So uh, <clears throat> I know that prayers are effective and powerful, and so let's keep praying for each other and uh, pray for our church family and uh, <clears throat> pray for your loved ones, obviously. The most powerful thing you can do is pray for each other, so let's make sure we do that. <clears throat> um I heard also, uh, they, they told me that they had 98 kids in Quam last night, so <laughs> that's pretty good. We almost hit the century mark uh, this year, and I don't think we've ever hit the century mark on Quam, so 
we are close to getting over that 100 kids on Quam night. So uh, <clears throat> it, it, just can't, it just can't happen if you don't have helpers. And uh, I, I heard that uh, we had uh, a bunch of helpers yesterday, and I am so thankful for that. And I also heard that uh, the teens that are helping this year are outstanding and have been a huge help and a huge blessing in, in uh, helping out uh, this year. And I <clears throat> really do just appreciate all of those that, that are working hard at that ministry. That's a, it's a big deal, and uh, the, it, it just doesn't happen without a lot of help. <clears throat> and so I really do just uh, uh, thankful for uh, so many following the Lord's leading in that and willing to help out and understanding that whatever your job is, no matter what you think and how trivial you might think it is, if you wasn't doing it, someone else would have to. And we just appreciate you doing it. And uh, God will bless you for that. So <clears throat> anyway, that was a good report. And uh, thankful uh, the safety of the kids and just continue to pray for God to uh, work in their hearts. So uh, I I don't know if you guys heard or not uh, today. What what is today? Some we're supposed to get some noti notification on our phones or whatever at a certain time today. I I have no idea what that. It's the end of the world, all right? And so. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> if it's the end of the world, if it's the rapture, it's not the end of the world, okay? Uh, but it could be the rapture. And if it is the rapture, then make sure, make certain that you have called on Christ to be your Savior and uh, look to Him for salvation. And uh, uh, we're perfectly safe in God's hands and not a better place to be than placing yourself there and so uh, <clears throat> trust in Christ, be sacrificed for your sins, and just give him your heart and live for him. There's nothing better, and know that he's got all things under control. In Psalm 76, verse 7, it tells us that thou, even thou, are to be feared. So who do we fear? We fear God, right? And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? There, no one, obviously. God's all-powerful. God's all-knowing. And verse 12, he shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. You know, there there are so many ungodly unbelievers out there. I mean, you, you look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, you look at the mess going on in D.C. <clears throat> we, um, we have Feinstein, who passed away this past week. We have uh, <clears throat> her replacement, um, an ungodly Bible denier. And we, we have the debacle yesterday of voting McCarthy out <clears throat> uh, as speaker. And uh, I think they ought to vote each other out of office. <laughs> All of them. <clears throat> Let's just vote you all out. And uh, we'll just start over, but <clears throat> um, you have all of that, and, and uh, we just, you know what we need to do? <clears throat> we just need to trust God, and, and we need to live for Him today. And uh, if, if we are putting our hope in, in that mess, then mercy, we are in trouble. I, I put zero hope in our government. I, I'll trust God, and... I'll, I'll obey the laws of the land as long as they're not making me go against the teachings of God and his word and and try to do my best to live at peace. But um, <clears throat> anyway, we just need to fear God, okay? And uh, Wayne, I see you're on here. I mentioned you earlier. We will continue to pray for you, brother, and I'm I'm glad that you are doing well and thankful that your new liver is working and... Uh, We'll just continue to pray for God's hand on your life. And, you know, when you, you hear things like that, that happened in Wayne Wayne's life, we, we look at this little guy, James, that uh, is getting stronger every day. And it just reminds you the things that are important, doesn't it? <clears throat> and these guys can bang the cymbals all they want, but uh, God's the one that we fear. God's the one that we walk with. And 
and <clears throat> let's just make sure that that we are uh, walking with him and so <clears throat> and then last thing that I want us to look at <clears throat> is in Jeremiah and uh, Jeremiah was a uh, was a powerful preacher and was a prophet during the Old Testament obviously and and uh, was uh, telling these guys in Judah, you need to repent. You need to get things right in your life before things come down hard on you. And and uh, really, it, it just it just reminds me of of all of us how we need to guard our lives and and guard our spiritual walk and don't get ourselves in a backslidden condition. And uh, it's it can be easy to do that, and and we do not want to do that. And um, look, look at your life and, and ask God to search your heart today and be open to him and Lord, you know, search my heart and show me, is there anything in my heart that is keeping me from walking with you the way that I should? And, and am, am I backslidden? Am I, uh, just ask yourself some questions on that. Are you, are you staying in the word of God every day? Are you, Spending some time reading, uh, that's how God talks to you today, is through his word. And are you letting him talk to you through his word? Are, are you talking to God through prayer today? Have you um, had uh, uh, time to to uh, talk to God Almighty today? And and uh, how's your walk today? Are, are, you, are you walking obediently to the word? Are you doing the things you ought to, or, or is there a bitterness in your heart and your spirit? Is there an anger there? Is there maybe an apathy or complacency where you just don't care? And, and well, th those are signs you need to get some things right. Okay. And let's uh, guard against that. And anyone can get that. I've look there, there've been times as a, as a pastor that I've had to stop and you know, you, you're spending time studying to, to do a message, but your heart isn't right, you know, and and it's so easy to to get off into what I call left field and, and uh, let's guard against that. And so be careful where, where you are spiritually, right? And <clears throat> it tells us here in, in Jeremiah 3, verse 12, go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. That's confession. Acknowledging. That, that's the very word for confession. And you are acknowledging to God the sin in your life. You are acknowledging that what you're doing isn't right and and you want it out of your life, and and so you confess it. You repent of that. You you turn away from those things, right? And and so here, acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers, under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I'll take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when you be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more at that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord and uh in in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and uh, I mean it and it goes on and how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land you, you know I, I see some things here that First of all, acknowledge things in your life that you know aren't right. Don't don't leave them there and, and don't let them fester or get infected and, and then lead you further down a path of, of a backslidden condition. But truly get your heart right and, and let him take your anger. Let him take the, I, I don't know, whatever it is that, that is bothering you at the time and, and get things right in your relationship with him. And... You, you know what you find? You find that not only does it give you a peace in your life and 
and then strengthen your family as you are doing the right thing. But it also is a great testimony to the rest of the world. And, and they see that and, and, uh, how we need to be careful, uh, of, of our condition. And then you get into chapter four and, and here we see the, the, the backsliding condition. And can I tell you, it'll never give you the joy that you're looking for. You know, I don't know why people get lazy. They get turned off from God. They, they, uh, get angry, they, they get bitter, they think, I don't know, they think God is not just or uh, or equal in, in his treatments or, I don't know, I don't know what all goes on in someone's mind that, that takes them down that path. Maybe they just get caught up in their own lust and, and desires that they have and they, they get busy doing work and they get busy living life and they get busy chasing the, the American dream or they... I don't know, maybe they even just get busy chasing their children around and, and instead of of chasing God and, and his will, but pretty soon your heart gets a little hardened to the word of God and, and you're not doing the things that you ought to be doing. And can I tell you, it will never, ever bring you to a place where of, of satisfaction. It, it'll never bring you to the place where where you are are feeling complete and whole and uh, it's going to leave a hollow place in your heart and your life and and really you're going to end up paying a severe price for that you know even sometimes if you wait long enough you, you might get things right in your life but the scars of that and the effects of that it may affect if you have children at home it may lead them down a path of disobedience that you've never seen before and disappointment and sadness that it, it may take years to recover from those things. And we just got to be careful with that and, and uh, don't go down that path. And, and you need to, to, as they say, stop the bleeding and, and uh, put some pressure on that and, and get it right. And, and, and uh, Make sure of that. And then I read this in Colossians 1, and look at this. I mean, the, here it is, the, the peacefulness of walking with God. It says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it. And what is it that they that it, uh, they heard? That the your love in the Spirit, okay? That's what Paul said they had heard. We do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I mean, these are the things that we ought to be working on daily, right? Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness. I mean, that's, that's how we... That's how we produce good fruit, if you see this. And that's how we increase in the knowledge of God. This is how we are strengthened in God's might, uh, according to his glorious power, it is unto all patience and long suffering. You know, the, the trials that come in our lives are not there to make us mad and bitter at God. They're just the opposite. They're, they're there to strengthen our faith and strengthen our walk and, and help us to... Uh, understand that he's there with us through the valleys as well as on the mountaintops. And, and, um, and, it, and it just gives us a thankful heart. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet uh, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. I mean, that that's good, isn't it? I mean, we, we are, here we are, we're living in this crazy world that is full of hatred and turmoil and stirring everything up. And so often we get so caught up in that, that we head down that same path. And God is telling us, stop, stop doing that and, and understand that he has something much better for us. And so let's look to him and, and let's walk with him and, and you you just find that that God 
is all powerful and, and able to help us in our walk and and get us through the day and and have a peacefulness in our heart that uh, truly the world seeks for and can't find. But uh, I, I don't know. It, it's it's a good day, isn't it? I, I know it's a challenging day for some of us. I we, we want to be home, but you know what? We we haven't even. We, we haven't even been able to hold little James yet. And and I just don't think I can leave until I get to hold this little guy. And so just pray that, that he continues to get better and stronger and that uh, it'll be safe to bring him home soon and that we can hold him. And that, um, you know, the, the these trials that come, and, and I, I don't know, it, it's a trial definitely for Matt and Kareth right now to, you know, dealing with all of this, a physical trial. This is when Satan really wants to get after you. But you know what? God is so good, and and, and it is such a good day and, and such a wonderful day to tell somebody about Jesus, to live for him, and to just be at peace, you know? And, and whenever that crazy alarm, whatever it is that they're, you know, has got the whole world so upset about, you know what, let's just, uh, let's just think about the day when that trumpet sounds and, you know, this government and this world government can try to play God. They're not even close that day when that trumpet comes sounds and, and we will be taken out of here. Hey, nothing better. And until then, let's live in this wicked world and let's tell people about Jesus and let's walk with him and let's have a peace in our heart that only God can give. And uh, let's serve him in, until the day is done. So let's go out with our boots on. All right. God bless you guys. It's Wednesday. Get in church somewhere tonight and uh, pray for one another. Spend some time in the word of God today. And let's be honoring and pleasing to him. God bless you guys. Have a great day.